Hello and welcome to another episode of the Red Delta Project podcast where we teach you how to maximize your results with minimalist fitness strategies like grind style calisthenics and diet free satisfying healthy eating strategies. Matt Schifferly here, founder of the Red Delta Project and author of the books Fitness Independence and Smart Bodyweight Training. Today's topic we're talking about how to strategically increase the work capacity of your muscles because at the end of the day increasing your muscular work capacity is what makes your muscles change. It's what makes them bigger and stronger and more functional. But before we get into that, I wanted to give you a quick update. Grind Style Calisthenics, the book is finished. I just finished up the last images this past week and now I've just got a couple of little things to do, but it's definitely on track to be released over the next few weeks. And I'll keep you updated on that through the YouTube channel and the Red Delta Project Instagram. But thank you everybody for your patience. It is coming and I can't wait to show you this book. All right, muscular work capacity. What are we talking about? Well, if you wanna make your muscles bigger and more functionally capable, your workouts should be focused on increasing their work capacity. And there's two variables that you need to focus on in order to do that. The first variable is the muscle's tension capacity. How much neurological current can the muscles handle? And then the other side is the time capacity or the muscular endurance. And what you want to do over the course of several workouts is increase both. It's not just strength. It's not just endurance. It's both. To increase your work capacity, it's a pretty simple process. We increase both over time. And usually the best way to do this is to fix or stabilize the amount of tension in the muscle, and then we add time over subsequent workouts, usually adding reps or adding seconds or whatever. Then after we've progressed that to a given amount, then we add more tension and we repeat the process and that's how the two come together and you have an overall more time and tension or an increased muscular work capacity. But like a lot of things in fitness, this is a real simple concept on paper, super hard to do in practical application because there's all sorts of ways we can get around it and compensate and basically get our numbers up or do a hundred different things. But we look at it like, but I'm not any bigger. I'm not any stronger. Like, why am I not getting that way? It's because something is progressing, but something is also regressing at the same time. And the following strategies are going to help prevent that and ensure your progress over time. So the first strategy, as I've talked about before, is tension control or that coveted mind-muscle connection. Because at the end of the day, if you can't put tension in a muscle, none of these matter. It doesn't matter how much weight you lift. It doesn't matter how many reps you do. If your brain has trouble getting the tension in the muscle to begin with, it's kind of like having a light bulb that's not plugged into a socket. Having the ability to foster that neurological connection is super critically important, especially these days, because your nervous system can be made stronger or weaker, just like your actual muscles. That's why they call it the neuromuscular system. It's not just about conditioning your actual muscle tissue. It's also about conditioning your nervous system. And if you're not conditioning your nervous system, then you're only doing one half of the battle and it's not even the most important half, I would argue. So that's why there's a tension control phase in every grind style workout that you ever do. It's basically just practicing putting tension in the muscle. It's nothing fancy or anything. You're just trying to practice making the muscles have tension because the more you get that neurological highway to be conditioned, the easier it is to put tension in the muscle, therefore setting both of these up for a much greater rate of success. The second tip is a ultra stable workout, especially as you get more advanced, because what ends up happening is in order to progress these, when you're beginning, it might be fairly easy with those newbie gains, like one difference from another workout can be huge. So it's like, oh, I felt this way while doing 10 pushups last week and now I can do 20 pushups. This is great. It's very obvious progression because ultimately your results don't come from your routine. They come from the progression of your routine. So when you're making big jumps like that, it's pretty obvious. However, as you get more advanced, your advancement goes in smaller and smaller steps, typically. Sometimes you figure out some new breakthrough and you make progress a lot faster, but for the most part, your difference from one workout to the next will be a fairly small amount. Now, if your workout is very unstable and you're doing totally different things every time, and your volume and your resistance and your intensity and your focus and everything's all over the place, that 1% difference, so the 0.0001% difference is really easy to get lost. And if you can't identify and build upon it, then you're just gonna kind of stay in an endless plateau. 
Now the grind phase in grind style calisthenics employs an ultra stable workout, which means that every workout is almost a carbon copy of the one before it. You do the exact exercise, exact same way, exact same reps, everything exactly the same. And what that does is it creates so much stability that even the smallest little differences are gonna become much easier to spot. And therefore you can say, oh wow, last workout I did three sets of 10 pull-ups, this workout I did three sets of 10, but that last two or three repetitions had a slightly bigger range of motion, or I could feel it a little bit more in my lats this time. So then you write it down in your workout log, and then you can take that and say, okay, now I can build off that and I want that every time. And then the next workout, you're like, I did it the same way, but instead of three sets of 10, I got 11 on the first one, and then 10 and 10. Very small differences in improvement, but if you're all over the place, it's hard to identify and build on them. But when your workout is ultra stable, it's a lot easier to do so. The third thing to consider, of course, is the things outside of your workout, because your muscular work capacity is built and progressed through your, and stimulated through your workouts. But the stuff outside of your workout is really heavily influential in how much your muscles can work. For example, nutrition, rest and sleep, and especially like mindset is very important. If you come into a workout and you're hungover and you're exhausted and you're stressed and you're tired and you haven't eaten anything, your ability to work your muscles goes way down. So once again, you're compromising your muscular work capacity. But if you're getting good sleep, you're eating good food, and you're coming in and you're saying, okay, problems at work, stay off a little bit. I'm gonna focus on this and get some good music going through your headphones. You're in a much better place mentally or emotionally. Suddenly your ability to work your muscles to a higher level of capacity goes up and your ability to progress follows suit. And then lastly is the whole quality versus quantity approach. Because when we're talking about muscular work capacity, it's not just weight and reps. It's not just how advanced a technique can you do and stuff. It's both because if you compromise the quality of your technique and what you're doing for the sake of quantity, that's not increasing your work capacity. It's just a seesaw going one up and one down. Or if you go the other way and you're like, quality is really high, but quantity is way down. And this fixed point just stays in the same place. But over time, what you're trying to do is increase both of these. So this stays the same, then you increase, then you bring it up, and then you increase, and you open, and that fixed point goes up, and that's how you can increase your work capacity. And I know sometimes that's going to seem impossible, and that's the point, because your body doesn't change when your mind makes a functional demand that it can handle. When your mind says, hey body, I need you to be able to do this exercise this way for this many reps and stuff, your body's like, all right, it's tough, but, I've got this, there's no stimulus to change. Even if it's really hard, your body changes because your neurological demand says, hey body, I need you to do X. Your body's like, I, dude, I, I don't quite have that. I don't quite have that capacity. And if that neurological demand stays consistent one week after the next, then your body's like, well, I guess I gotta change in order to make that demand. So if it seems a little bit impossible or just outside the realm of what you can possibly do, then know you're on the right track. So thank you very much for listening. As always, if you have questions, write deltaproject at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on YouTube, questions down below in the comments section. Also, if you're watching, you can check out the videos here on my left to learn more about the Grind Style system. And also I have, don't forget, the Grind Style Calisthenics playlist here on YouTube as well. I'll keep you updated on the book as it's coming out, but I'll talk to you guys next week. Till then, be fit, live free.